don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. So today, on the hottest day of the year so far, when I should be um, not stuck indoors, but I am, <laughs> um, I'm going to do a bit of an experiment. Um, I have this six inch kind of deep frame. I've also cut a small piece of MDF that will fit in the back. So this is going to be what I'm going to be working on. Um, as you can see, I've already drawn the lines round so I know where the edge of the canvas is going to sit. So where that frame is going to go once it's finally inside the frame. So this is the piece that I'm actually going to be working on. So I'll move the frame to one side, put it out of the way so that it's nice and safe, doesn't get splashed or messed up with anything. Um, and then I'm going to mask off um, if I can those edges. So let me find some stencil tape which I should have got ready earlier so I apologise for that. So just move these few bits out of the way for now just so you can see what I'm going to be doing. And um, So stencil tape. It's really low tack. So I'm just going to do it up against that line that I've already drawn on the edge. It's only a few millimetres, not even worth worrying about really. And I'm just going to tack it down. But I don't want any additional kind of lumps and bumps underneath there where it's going to go and fit into the frame when it's done. Okay, so that should just about do it. So the experiment that I'm going to be doing today is I'm not going to be using any cast resin pieces, it's going to be all MDF what all these bits are here but the way I'm going to colour the canvas is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do um, and that's going to be the experiment because I've only ever seen it done before I've never actually done it myself okay so this this is a new stencil which is coming out at the beginning of August this is called Evil Empire those of you that um, are huge Star Wars fans will recognise the pattern because this is the pattern that appears in places like the Death Star and all Imperial kind of bases. These is like the lighting. As they're walking down the corridors, these panels are on the walls um, and where these lozenges kind of shapes are, the pill shapes, that's where the light comes through. So they're like light panels. Um, instantly recognisable for those of you who um, are Star Wars fans. If you're not a Star Wars fan, then you probably won't know. Um, but you may just like the pattern anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply um, a coat of, um, actually I might just, I might just tape that down. Why not? Seeing as the stencil tape's there, there's a slight curve on the stencil because of the way I've had it sitting, <laughs> waiting to go. So. push it down and then just stick it to my craft mat. There we go. Right, so I've got some um, True Grit. It's just texture paste. It's very fine. And I'm just going to dob that down and then just scrape it through. I'm not particularly bothered about a perfect and even uh, coating because it's going in the background. I'm going to be building on top of this. So it's just going to add kind of additional texture in the background, invisible texture. So the stuff that you see, but you don't see. You can see it's there, but you don't really, you know, it doesn't stand out. 
that'll do. Now I don't mind if it seeps underneath a little bit, that's fine. So what I need to do is just quickly go and clean off my spatula and also clean off the stencil because you don't want to let texture paste dry in your stencil because that's one way of making sure you end up ruining your stencil. So let me just take that tape off. Remove the stencil. There we go. Perfect. Right, I'll just go and clean this and then I'll be right back. Okay, so it's the last thing I need on the hottest day of the year is to have a heat gun on. But it <laughs> needs must. <clears throat> okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give um, the entire panel a coat of black gesso. So this is indigo blue black gesso. New label, same product. Um, so I'm just grab a paintbrush. Now then, I did have somewhere. So this is where things start disappearing. There we go, some kitchen roll. Had a little bit of a tidy up, but I can't find anything. I know, everybody's the same. Right, brush. Make sure it's clean. And then grab some of that black gesso. And then I'm just gonna go over the whole thing. Now obviously with it being so warm today the stencil tape isn't exactly sticking properly so I'm just having to adjust a little bit. There we go. So Unusually for us in the UK, temperatures today are around about 38-39 Celsius, um, which is well over 100 in Fahrenheit. Very, very unusual for us here in the UK. And obviously, we all know why even if there are people who deny it. Okay, so that's the coat of black gesso. So once this is dried, I can literally take off the stencil tape then. So, and obviously in the humidity and heat of today, it really won't take long to dry at all. In fact, you can see it's already drying without me even having <laughs> to do anything with a heat gun. Yeah, it's literally just drying as I watch. Right, so that's pretty much dry now. So I can take the stencil tape off. There we go. That looks good. all right. Happy with that. That isn't the experiment. Obviously, the experiment's coming in a little while. Um, so let me just lift that up. I don't know whether you can see. There is definitely texture behind that. It's only thin texture. That's all it really needed to be. Okay, so I'm going to put that to one side. I'm going to bring in this big pile of MDF elements now. So. For a change, I'm going to paint everything before I use it. So I don't normally, but I am going to this time. So this set of kind of MDF pieces, and there are some bits that go together like those. So that was the inspiration from an old printer serial port, the back, that we used to connect printers with back in the day. And if you can remember, a long time ago before um, lightning cables and ethernet cables. We used to connect video recorders and that kind of stuff with a connector that looked like that, the scar lead. So these are, and that kind of mimics the inside of a three pin plug, a European three pin plug. There are some other bits and pieces, just like a little bit of a, a grill. 
they're all a bit grungy, they're all a bit dirty. There's some um, like wind up keys, there's some like screw heads, hex nuts, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's what the composition is going to be made from. So, what I want to do is, I just want to give everything a coat of black gesso first. So, again, grab a brush. Smaller brush this time, I think. Where's my kitchen roll? There we are. That will do. Right, so black gesso. So we know these things cover really, really well with gesso because it's wood, essentially. So it'll just soak in quite nice. This is um, medite, so it was meant to be used um, for bathrooms and that kind of thing. So it is kind of water, um, not water soluble, uh -huh. um, resistant to water. So it's not going to blow your MDF like the original stuff used to do. Okay, so that's the first piece. Let's do the plug. So the experiment that I'm going to be doing today is with a new technique with um, pigment powders. Um, not just any old pigment powders, but pigment powders that have also got mica in them. So um, instead of mixing the powders and things with water like you normally would do, I'm going to mix them um, with a gloss medium. So that's going to be the experiment because I've never done it before. I've never watered down a gloss medium and I've never used it to spray to activate mica powders or pigment powders. Because it's a gloss medium and it's not water, when it dries it'll be permanent and fixed in place. Whereas if you just used water, um, they wouldn't be. They would be water reactive again. So using a more permanent um, solution, if you like, literally a solution, to adhere your mediums down onto is all new for me so and if it does work opens up a whole new avenue okay right so I've still got quite a few to do so I'll pop off go and finish painting all this lot and then I'll join you when it's all painted and it's all dry and I'm ready to start gluing bits together. So they've had a chance to dry now, so I'm going to be able to... Um, this is the only one that I've painted both sides. You'll, you'll see why later. Um, so I'm just going to push those to one side. 
sorry I need that one as well so these are the only other two pieces that I want to glue together so I've got some um, PVA glue just in a fine point applicator and I'm just going to add a little bit of glue because you don't really need a lot of this stuff because I'm using MDF and because I'm using wood we don't have to use any real strong adhesives PVA will work perfectly and don't forget when PVA dries it dries completely transparent so you don't even have to worry about um, squeeze out because it will just disappear there we go so those are the only two pieces that I need to glue down I mean, if I was, you know, being really pedantic, <laughs> there you go. So, like I said, they're the only two bits that really need sticking together, and believe me, they're already stuck. <laughs> already stuck. So those are the only two bits, right? So I'm going to give those a few minutes just to kind of set solid. Um, and then I shall bring back in my canvas now that I know where everything's going. Uh, and I'll show you how I did that or how I know where everything's going in a little while. Okay, so um, what time is it? Oh, it's also 11.30. No wonder my tummy's rumbling. I think I'm going to have an early lunch while all this is drying. And then I'll be right back. Everything's had a chance to dry a little bit now. There's still a little bit just in there, but I'm not particularly bothered about that. So what I did earlier, before I started painting anything, before I even started filming, is I laid everything out in a kind of composition on my phone and took a photograph of it on my phone. So I kind of know where everything wants to go. So I did that before anything. <laughs> So, I just, so just so that I knew I wouldn't forget. So there you go. So I'm going to keep that to one side and handy. And then I'm going to use the same glue that I used earlier. And I'm going to start gluing things down using my telephone as a guide. So what I'll do is I'll pop that there. So you can pretty much see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So again... I'm not going to use a huge amount because don't need to with this stuff. So just start sticking it down. Okay. Start building up the composition, and of course, it's going to disappear because I've already painted stuff in black. So, here we go. So this is the reason I only painted one side. Because obviously it's going to get glued. And you'll have to excuse me if I get my head in shot. Okay, so we've got in that top corner, one of those, it's the one, the circular one. So that goes between there like that. And then there's a small crosshead. 
I have got some tweezers here that will help me place things because I can get a little cack handed. See, my hands are shaking like I don't know what there. But it's not critical. Right, so over to this side. So we need one of them big cross headed screw head things. Just a few bits of glue. Right now, I need that to go right about there. So that creates a bridge for that. And then I can add along there and along there. That's pretty much all it's going to need, really. See, I would just treat this exactly the same way you would do your resin pieces because it, it pretty much is the same sort of thing but because like I said because I'm using wood I don't have to worry too much about um, about what glue I'm using because you know, it works. Does that need to move just up a little bit up there so I can get that one in? Yeah, let's move up a little bit further. There we go. Now I want that so it's horizontal. I just turn that a little. Perfect. I know you probably can't. There you go. You can probably see it a bit better now. Because it's already all dark. Right, so the scar panel. Because it's going on a grill. So I'm going to place that about there. And then where did we have? So we need that circular piece there to go in first. Right, so that needs to go under there. And then we can bring that piece in across there like so. Hey, we get in there. Okay, so we've got that, so we need another circular piece just to go on top of. Like so. We're getting there. Alright, so we've got that little cross head piece there. Right, there's a small one that sits just on that bit there. So rather than... There we go. Let's just pop a little bit of glue on that. And then I can just drop that down. Yeah, 
There we go. So that's that one. Now there's also a small little, oh, small little hexagon one that goes up at the top there. Now is that still going to fit? Yes, it is. So. Alright, so I think we're nearly there. So I think it's just... Okay, so this one needs to go in next. I'm missing a piece. How interesting. I wonder where that went to. Probably ended up on the floor, but that's okay. No, it's there. That must that must be it. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's correct. That that's totally and utterly correct. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Okay. I know what I'm doing now. <laughs> I just got a little bit lost with myself. Right, so I'm going to place that one just there. And then there's a smaller hexagonal. Okay, then I'm going to put Just a little bit further down, like there. And then there's that slot head. Which I'm going to place just about there. Okay, so this cross head piece here needs to go inside this hex piece. Now we're going to have to do this fairly quickly. Right. And then just using that key, I'm just going to turn it. There we go. So it's fairly straight. Okay, so that's all of the pieces that I'm going to put on. Now, originally there was going to be another key that I was going to stick on there, but I don't think, actually, I do like that now, now that I've got it there. No, I think I will stick it back on. Right. I need to get it painted. Right, what I'll do is I'll paint this um, and then I'll let this dry and then I'll be back. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. And don't forget, you can access your exclusive angel-only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.